everyone, it's your boy NoranRad89 here, bringing you another video, and for today's video, we are going to be talking about George A. Romero's 1973 classic, The Crazies. His birthday was actually this week, and I got a chance to check this film out for the first time, and this is one of the few instances where I've seen the remake before the original, so let's dive into this 1973 original. George A. Romero's film, The Crazies, follows a storyline as a military uh, plane crashes that is carrying a biological weapon, and it ends up getting loose in the town in the water. So as people, like, you know, at the town start drinking the water, and then, like, as the title of the movie states, The Crazies, they slowly start to kind of go insane. We kind of ensue at the beginning. It's kind of similar to the remake, where we follow a man who's, like, trapping his wife and I think his daughter or his son in the house and he's like burning it and setting it on fire and all kinds of stuff so it's like very heavy weighted you know material and George A. Romero is so good at that stuff like especially like with the Night of the Living Dead films and like all his Living Dead trilogy films and all those kind of things it definitely carries into this film and you can see how he's able to handle heavy weighted material very the easily. The main differences definitely with this original 1973 one is there's a lot more to do with the military, the scientists, like there's a whole good chunk of the movie that has to deal with just them and it's about how they're quarantining the town and fighting for supplies and you know like resources and all that kind of stuff. It's like a lot of it is weighted and uh, that film like is a big part of the film and it's a lot different from the other crazies which is more centered on the people and like you know the 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 whole military thing is just kind of like the eye watching you but we don't get a lot of details about it it's much more about the people on the ground and this one like is just about all of them you know what i mean so it kind of brings in a lot more this one has a lot more content in it in terms of that way but I don't think necessarily that stuff is relatable. It's cool to see how, you know, the government does it and how there's military men and scientists fighting for the cure and like, you know, all these kind of stuff. But I just don't think it's as relatable as following when we get to the point and we're following, uh, you know, Clank and Judy and Artie and stuff like that. And we're following the crew and all those people in the, and they're dealing with what's happening and the repercussions and having to hide out and like not knowing all the stuff that's happening with the weapon and everything. So I think that stuff is more relatable when we're following like the actual people of the team. As I said, this film has some very shocking, like uh, very heavy and shocking subject matter. You have to be really into watching this film. There's a lot of like even and trigger warning type scenes like I can tell you that for sure but as I said George A. Romero was able to weave a story throughout all that kind of stuff and like I said even if you don't adore his films he does really good at writing his films like George A. Romero is so good at writing his films <clears throat> and they're very grounded and realistic in a good way but they have elements of supernatural stuff and little elements of science stuff like you know what I mean just in there sprinkled in there and he's able to weave in like an amazing story, mainly because he focuses on three dimensionalizing his characters. Like he really makes them much more than just surface level characters. All of the characters in his films are like that. And even in this one, like I said, Clank is one of my favorites as he kind of, he's the best friend and he kind of slowly starts going insane and stuff like that. And you kind of see he's helping out in some points, but other points he's really doing a disservice to the team or to the people, you know, when they're trying to escape and hide out and stuff. But, oh man, like I said, it's very deep, heavy subject matter. And it's rare occurrence for me, like I said, to see the remake before the original. Like I went to review the, or watch this one because yeah, George A. Romero in honor of his birthday, I was like, oh, you know, I've never seen this film. Let's dive into this one and check it out and stuff. And it is still a good movie. I would probably rate this film in my book like a 7 out of 10 or probably maybe like a 6. It's, it flirts between a 6 and a 7 out of 10. And the reason it does that is because I just find this one not as relatable as the new one. A lot of the stuff happens during the day and I know the subject matter is heavy and that's a very horrific thing about this film. But the other one, I think, is much more horrific in terms of the darkness, the cinematography, the kills, you know, the lighting, stuff like that. I think there's a little bit more ambiance and feel 
in the remake film and stuff like that. So that's why I, I was like, oh, I kind of like, you know, enjoy the remake a little bit more than this one. It's still not a film that I return to that often, you know, crazy. This isn't one of my jams. Like it's more, I'm more of a, you know, when it comes to George A. Romero, now that I've watched this one and I've seen the remake, I'm definitely much more into his, you know, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead type films, you know, that kind of stuff. But like I said, this is still a movie that you have to watch, especially because like the time we're in now, like it kind of fits with like, you know, the whole quarantining and viruses and stuff like that. And it really, this one does a better job of showing you how it affects everyone. But I think the newer remake film is much more relatable in terms of me being like just who I am as a person and me being like a normal, you know, Joe Schmo type person. Like it, it's much more relatable in that fashion. And But the old one, yeah, George A. Romero's is cooler in the way that it really does build a world and show you how the biological weapon like this and it gets loose in a town, how it really could affect everything. And then when you come down to that ending scene, spoiler warning, of course, right here, spoilers. When we come down to that third act and everything kind of ensues and people are dying left and right and, you know, Artie goes through his thing with Judy, like, it's, I mean, like with his daughter character, I think it's Katie, I think, I can't remember the daughter character's name in that movie, but, oh, there's some crazy gruesome scenes in this movie towards the end of that third act and then to find out this military man or this one guy who's been kind of organizing it and, like, uh, you know, trying to keep the borders alive in this town so it doesn't spread finds out that we're getting cases and rumors that there's stuff going on in the next town so it's basically like we have to start this over and you know he's on the phone and the people are talking to him and they're like well you know since you got one under your belt and you did such a good job and we don't have to worry about screening you for the thing and this and that we can just you know we can just ship you off to the next town and we'll do it all over again and it's like it just really sinks you in it's like damn it's it's a dreadful film it really is a dreadful movie but like I said, I did have a blast watching it. It's just not one that I'll probably return to just because I don't feel like as much ambiance and stuff like that. I do like the writing and I said there is some horrific moments, but it's not a story that grabs me. You know what I mean? Like biological weapon stuff and everything like that. It's not, you know, it doesn't interest me a whole, whole lot. I'm much more a slasher type person or a zombie type person when it comes to subgenres and horror. So that's much more my realm. So this one is, like I said, it's not going to be a return to, but I still would easily give this one probably, like, we'll say we'll say a 7 out of 10. I'll say comfortably that this is film is like a 7 out of 10 film for me. So thanks for sticking around with me all for this chat of talking about The Crazies from 1973 and a little bit about the remake, too. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of the film, if you've seen the film. And if you haven't, I highly suggest running out and checking it out. It's free on Tubi if you want to watch this film. So go check it out. And then, like I said, hit me up in the comment section. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't yet, what are you doing? Hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. And have a safe and happy day. Peace out.